Hey guys, I'm Cesar, director of Alley Cat Games, and you're listening to the Legends of Tabletop co podcast. Good afternoon, everybody. That's a little bit of a different one. We have uh, Cesar this afternoon coming to us from the UK. So thanks for coming on, sir. No problem. Thanks for having me on, on your show. Absolutely. We're, uh, we're kind of getting in on the tail end of this now, but you are... Uh, 200% funded for uh, Cauldron Master, a brand new game that you guys have, have out on Kickstarter. Uh, yeah. So congratulations for that. Oh, thank you very much. Yep. Um, so this is not your first go around to, to Kickstarter. You guys had the wildly successful Lab Wars. Uh, was it late last year, right? Yeah, it was uh, during the summer of 2016. Um, and yeah, you're right. It, it, it was really successful, but it was much more successful than we ever anticipated. So, yeah, we were really fortunate. You guys hit like a thousand percent or something like that. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. I mean, I honestly thought, you know, 5,000 pounds. So at that point, seven and a half thousand dollars. And then we might hit maybe $15,000 tops. And that would be really great for us. But in the end, it just spiraled out of control. We just couldn't believe it. Yeah, that, that's awesome. So I'm, I'm guessing you were surprised then. <laughs> totally surprised. Um, and in fact, uh, me and my partner, we were sat here on the day that it went live. And then we pressed live and um, I, I emailed the journalist uh, at Nature News who was ready to click the, the go button with his article. And as soon as his article went live about 10 minutes later, it was literally going bing, 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 bing. It's just... <laughs> Which is crazy. Um, and, you know, for a first time creator, I think having that exposure with a big magazine really, really helped, um, you know. So, yeah. Okay. And, and, and so we'll jump into that a little bit. So uh, you are, are not a game designer by, by trade. You actually have a PhD in molecular and structural, structural biology. So <laughs> how did you wind up here? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, so about a year before... Uh, Lab Wars was um, put on Kickstarter. Me and my partner were on holiday, um, and, and she, you know she she has a, a PhD in, in psychology as well. So we were just sat there. We were just thinking. Um, we were playing a friend's uh, prototype game actually um, while we were on holiday, and we just thought to ourselves, actually, hey, we can make our own game. And uh, one of the themes that we thought that we hadn't been explored in board games was uh, academia and science. So uh, we just thought, hey, let's just make a game and see where it takes us. So uh, fast forward, um, you know, a year, and then it, it went on to Kickstarter. And that was something that we had to do, uh, you know, in parallel to our jobs uh, as me as a scientist and then my partner as a clinical psychologist. So it was tough, but it was also lots of fun. Mm -hmm. what, what was it that... that um sort of caused you to to pause at, at what you were doing in your professional life and say I, I'm you know I'm not happy or I'm not comfortable or or what you know what was kind of the, the overriding factor there well I mean uh, that's a really difficult one to, to answer really I mean I did my PhD uh, I really enjoyed it that's where I met my partner um, and then I moved on to uh, to Cambridge University um, to do my my postdoctoral work, and I, I just started realizing that science wasn't really for me, um, you know, for a number of reasons, uh, which is probably too long to explore in this podcast. Um, but essentially, I was just like, you know, it's not really the career for me. I felt like I was more of a entrepreneurial type guy, where I needed to work with people rather than on science stuff. So when when I when we started doing this game design of Lab Wars and the publishing and whatnot, I, I realized that my talents lay more in this sort of area, which is you know working with other people and uh, maybe project management a bit more. And um, that's when I decided uh, when my contract came up for renewal at the end of June that I wouldn't pursue it. Um, and here we are now. <laughs> cool. All right, well, and, and gamers uh, all across the world are happy for it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So do you feel like there's any skills, you know, coming from that background that you're able to apply to your, your game design and, and the company, I like Ad Games? Um, yeah, I think so, because um, when, you, when you're a scientist, you really have to micromanage, but also project manage as well. Um, and 
I think that is quite an well it's a very important thing I think as a publisher you have to be able to multitask you have to work with lots of other people you have to sort of see the bigger picture um, so there's lots of those sort of skills that are taken from being a scientist because when you are a scientist you're often working on multiple experiments all at, you know at different times you're not just working on one small thing you're working on little things that you're trying to get to work it's a similar pro you know process with publishing which is you know you're talking to the illustrator you're talking to the graphic designer you're talking to the proofreader and you have to be sort of I, I liken it to you have to be the orchestrator of, of this all uh, you have to orchestrate everything and and uh, you know you're sort of like the composer so you have to make sure that everyone's waltzing along to the same beat and it's similar as a scientist you know so I felt like yeah some of those skills were definitely trans transferred along to here sure I, I feel that for sure I, I got I not as highly educated but I got my bachelor's in biology with an environmental concentration and I've been doing environmental right. lab work for ugh, 20 years almost right that's and, interesting it's the same thing where you're you have eight different things going on all at the same time. You're like, oh shit, I got to get to that in five minutes. And this one's on my phone. And <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly it. Yeah. So you know, that's exactly what the process is like. Yeah. Totally. No, it, it's good for us type A personalities. <laughs> yes. Yes. Totally. I liken it to uh, to being the the quarterback for a football team where you're kind of you know calling all the plays and sort of coordinating everything that's going on over the course yeah. of the day. So yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, I'm not actually a big uh, American football guy, but I I know that the quarterback is is the central guy, so that kind of makes sense to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> cool. Uh, so you uh, you've been doing game design for uh, just about just about a year now. Yeah, so um, I started as soon as I got back from holiday. The first thing I did was find my local playtest group. And I was like, right. hey, can I join up with you guys? And actually, it's run, I don't know if you know the game. It's called Elysium. It's run by the guy who designed Elysium. Oh, nice. And he's, he's fantastic. Um, Brett Gilbert. It's also um, the co-designer of Elysium, Matthew Dunstan. He's also part of it as well. And, um, yeah, they're great guys because... Um, to be quite honest, they're quite brutally honest. <laughs> but as, as a game designer, you really need that because um, you don't want a load of yes men just telling you or yes women saying this is a great game. You don't want to hear that. You want to hear what's bad about your game. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as you hear less and less bad things about your game, that's when you know that your game's ready. Right. Now, what do you find to be um, the, the more difficult part? Is it you know, going through the playtesting? Is it, is it just, you know, sitting down trying to come up with mechanics or, you know, wh where's the, the bugaboo as you're designing that, you know, kind of throws you off a little bit? I mean, um, as a publisher and a designer, um, I think my, my strengths are definitely with, with publishing. Uh, my game design skills are very, I would say, uh, I'm still learning them. Um, and as a result, I feel like it's, it's quite a steep curve. I think, you know, anyone can say, oh, I'm designing a game. But to design a good game is, I think, very difficult. Um, and I think the difficulties I find are, just like you said, a, a mix of trying to nail down what mechanics I want or need to change, but also just the playtesting itself. Because playtesting, I think, can be very demoralizing. You know, unless you're surrounded by yes men or yes women, yeah. <laughs> um, it is very demoralizing because you're constantly thinking, how do I change this? How do I change that? You know, what's not working? And sometimes you'll add a bit and it doesn't work or you'll remove a bit and it does work. And it's just, it's just trying to find that balance and finding it is, I think, very difficult. And I think anyone who says it's easy is lying. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and even with uh, with uh, Cauldron Master um, on the website or on the on the Kickstarter page, uh, the, there's one video that has the most current rules. So even you know yeah. while the game is on Kickstarter, there's still some manipulation and some changes and and yeah. some wholesale, wholesale changes. It seems like to some of the mechanics. <clears throat> yeah, and that was really unfortunate because um, at the time we sent off the game to the reviewers, this was in early January. Because I, I like to be prepared. I like to make sure the reviewers, you know, have a lot of time just to take it in. Because at the end of the day, you have to be respectful to reviewers' time. Uh, people like yourselves in the industry giving up your own spare time. I think uh, as a publisher, you have to build these relationships, and it's important. But 
um, unfortunately, I sort of shot myself in the foot by by being by trying to be nice by trying to send it early. But at that point, I felt like it was finished. But then, while I was doing more and more and more playtests, it suddenly became apparent that uh, one of the mechanics of the game was slightly a bit wonky. So we had to change it almost uh, almost immediately after I sent out the games to the reviewers. Mm -hmm. So that was really unfortunate, and it's something that I wouldn't recommend to um, other game designers and publishers simply because you just you really got to make sure your game's finished because it can cause lots of annoyance. But luckily, uh, the Antlab Games uh, guys, so Anthony and Francis, um, they did it slightly later and they were very willing to change uh, the way they were going to record the video. So luckily, they were very happy to change it. So I was really happy about that. Yeah, I, I think they did a good job with it too. I was I was watching that yesterday in preparation for today, um, and I, I think they, you know, fully explained all the changes, you know, in a way that you know, kind of made everything made sense. Yeah, and the the great thing about them was they explained why the old version was slightly wonkier compared to the new version. So that was you know, I was really appreciative of that because you know, other reviewers could have been quite annoyed and said, "Sorry, dude, you know, you sent me in this state," and yeah. Yeah, and and the, and the newer version seems a much much more streamlined. Oh yeah, um, yeah, it's much more streamlined, and it's a lot more fun. But it's a lot more rewarding because this way, rather than having it the way it was before, which was, uh, it was actually relatively punishing actually because it almost had options that were restricting. But this way, we've actually opened up the options, but made it a lot more rewarding, where you can almost score these crazy combos as a result. So it's it's nice that it's streamlined and become more rewarding as well. Sure. And and, and talking about fun, and you know, maybe this question's a little bit more esoteric, but but what do you think makes a game fun? Is is it is it a theme thing? Is it a mechanic thing? And I know everybody, you know, relates to games on a different level, but what, what makes a game fun for you? For me and my partner, um, we we personally like to get engrossed in the game. Like we like to feel part of the game. So one one game we use as an example is uh, we love Viticulture, for instance. Mm. And the reason we like it is because we really feel like we're making wine, um, and we're there and we're trying to uh, make our fields and we're trying to plant our fields and we're sending out our workers and we're sending out tours and. So for us uh, and especially for me, I like to be engrossed and and. That for me is is part of the fun. Um, the the mechanics for me don't have to be completely unique, although that does help. Um, but yeah, for for us theme. But I understand that for for many other people, and as I've learned through putting games on Kickstarter, that people want to have unique mechanics uh, as usually the the most important thing. Sure, something that's you know it sticks out in people's minds and like oh I've never seen you know yeah. X before. Totally. That looks really cool. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, what what lessons did you take away from from that first Kickstarter for a Lab Wars? You guys, you know, knocked it out of the park. You were like, "Oh, this is easy from now on. I don't have to worry about anything. We know what we're doing." <laughs> well, as yeah, I mean, as you can see, you know, Cauldron Master didn't raise as much, um, and that's I think for a variety of different reasons. Um, so actually, I think I've learned more from my second Kickstarter campaign than I did my my first, which is. Um, for instance, one thing I was actually just discussing with my partner just now was was the artwork, and we we actually pitched uh, two different artists to loads of different people, and uh, and a lot of them said that they liked this artist. However, the other artist that we didn't eventually end up going for is actually more well known in the board game industry. Um, so I kind of feel like we made a mistake there by not going with someone that is well recognizable. Um, so that's one thing. But what's the other thing? Um, I think also now Kickstarter is, is so saturated with so many small guys like me. You really have to try and, you know, you have to find a way to uh, stand out of the crowd. Um, and I think something like Lab Wars did stand out of the crowd because it appealed to, for instance, scientists, which are not a typical Kickstarter demographic. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think going with something like a witch theme may have been, I don't know, a mistake or something. But personally, I think having the witch theme really worked, especially with the mechanics. And I, I think if, if you want to make a big, big blockbuster, you know, something that makes over $50,000, 
you really have to make something that is completely new, amazing art, um, but also has loads of stuff in it, and more importantly, is a medium weight game. Um, I think I think light games like you know like Cauldron Master has has their place, but I think right now on Kickstarter, people want to be wowed and they're willing to spend money, but on something that is big, you know. Right. Now, see, that's different for me because I I really enjoy a filler game. Um, yeah. You know, a six hour game for me. I'd rather role play at that point as opposed sure. to you know board game. Not not that it doesn't have its place. I'm not knocking it. I I haven't had the opportunity to play a six hour board game. Um, you know, and 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 each one of those things sort of you know hits a different note with people. Yeah. Um, but I, I there are a lot of people. I mean, the Kickstarter is somewhat less of proof of concept now than what it used to be. Um, yeah. You know, people are coming in, and there's such a wide variety of games to choose from, from you know, from little startups to choose from. Um, but but there is some really wonderful stuff out there, um, and 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 you know, you guys are are right in there amongst them. I mean, you know, even though Cauldron Master is not you know quite up to to where Lab Wars was, you're you're sitting at two hundred percent. So I mean, not too shabby. Yeah, yeah exactly, and. Um... I mean, uh, our next project, for instance, is going to be a lot bigger. It's going to be more targeted towards the Kickstarter demographic. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, following my colleagues here from the UK, a lot of them are doing medium to heavyweight games. And I think that is sort of where Kickstarter is right now. Um, and I, I think you just have to go with what's in demand and uh, what kind of games you want to make personally as well. Sure, sure. Um, so, I mean, our, our philosophy is science-themed games. Uh, Cauldron Master was a bit of a diversion because that was a small game idea, but generally we're, we're making science-themed games to make sure that people can play science and maybe learn something, but also have fun in the process because there's nothing worse than having a, a board game where it's educational and it's just not fun. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go back to the art real quick because I... Yeah. I really like the art. I like that style. Um, sure. It's Iron Horrors on Deviant Art. I'll, I'll let you pronounce her her name, her actual name, because I don't want to butcher it. <laughs> well, yeah, her her artist name is Irene Horrors, um, but her I mean her real name is Ksenia. But um, she's a great she's a great artist, and and in fact, I'm not going to lie. When I was flicking through to find an artist that was appropriate for Cauldron Master. I, I thought I'd accidentally stumbled upon someone who was copying Disney stuff. Uh, <laughs> and that's genuinely what I thought. So I thought, well, this, this, this person's great. And, you know, I contacted her and, and she was like, oh, I've never done a board game before. I'd love to do this. So, um, but f for me and my partner, we absolutely loved, loved her stuff. And we thought it fit really well with the whole theme and the dark sort of, I mean, it's not dark humor, but it's, it just fits in well with the game, we thought. Yeah, no, I, I thought so for sure. And, and you know, I, I saw a couple, maybe a couple of the comments you're talking about where people were not, you know, quite as happy with the artwork. But, you know, theme-wise, yeah. I, th I think it fit. And, you know, I mean, I guess that stuff is subjective, right? Like, not everybody's going to like everything I like. Totally. Or you like. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I thought it was amazing. I I was uh, I was looking to see if she had um, a poster or a print or something of the Raven because he's just so cool looking. <laughs> Yeah, the Raven's cool. I mean, uh, a lot of the, the bonus cards, so for instance, we asked her to draw a unicorn, and that's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, her, her art is, is really fantastic. The stuff that she did, especially with the characters um, and the level of detail and, and the historical, for instance, uh, or mythological uh, detail to it, we just thought was great. Um, so yeah. Yeah, so take all that. Take that, you people who don't like the art. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's everyone's entitled to their opinion. I mean, I think if the people didn't like the art, I'm sure they'd like the mechanics because it's it's just so simple and fun to play and quick as well. So. Sure, sure. Yeah. Right. Now, were you prepared, you know, when you did Lab Wars to sort of ride that social media wave? Was that one of the things that you had considered when you were initially getting into, you know, board game design and kind of starting up your own company? Or was that a little bit more of a surprise? Uh, is this before the campaign or after? Uh, or before the campaign started, when you're like, oh, I'm going to make this transition and, you know, we want to, you know, we're going to start our own company and, and that kind of stuff. And then, you know, to try to, you know, push things forward, you know, Kickstarter now is, is just, 
I don't want to say it's a slog and I don't know because I haven't done it, but um, <laughs> we have a lot of people on that are doing it and it's just like interviews and, and you know, the, the Twitter and, you know, you've got to be on Instagram and all these different things. Uh, were you expecting that or were you prepared for that? Well, it's, I think it's, if you don't do it, you, you know, your, your Kickstarter will fail. So it's a, it's a do or die attitude. Um, mm-hmm. And yet yeah, you're right. It is a slog. Um, and I think some people are better at it than others. Uh, I think some people can't do it at all. Um, <laughs> um, I, I think some people like me, maybe in the middle where I enjoy doing it anyway. Um, but yeah, in, in preparation for Lab Wars, I, I knew that I read a lot of blogs, obviously the Jamie Stegmeyer ones and the James Matthew ones. Um, you know, if you don't read those, you almost certainly fail <laughs> or make a lot less money. Um, so definitely recommend reading those blogs, but, um, yeah, I was definitely prepared to do a lot of social media work and, uh, a lot of my, a lot of my time, apart from at that point, we just had a Twitter account and our website was basically just harassing journalists and saying, Hey, do you want to do an article about lab wars? Um, so I spent a lot of time doing that and and it, it did pay off luckily. Um, but yeah, for Cauldron Master, similarly, you know, my partner runs the Instagram ag- account for that, and I do the Twitter for that. And yeah, it's it's a slog, but you have to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes it's I don't know diminishing returns. Possibly, uh, you know, there's, there's <laughs> a certain point where maybe you're not doing, maybe you're doing too much. But I mean, for instance, uh, James Hudson, who did uh, the Grim Forest. You know, he was out there literally every day telling people, hey, man, you need to buy the Grim Forest. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. You know, it got to a point where it's like, oh, man, this guy's like almost spamming people. But he did it in a really good way, which was, hey, what about this new thing I'm doing? And what about this one? And now look how well Grim Forest is doing. So, you know, congratulations to him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it can, it can be somewhat diminishing returns. I mean, like I know when we started, I was on Twitter like all the time and let me scroll all the way back to where I left off from yesterday. Cause I don't want to miss anybody. And now it's yeah. like, Hey, we're doing a thing tomorrow. <laughs> we'll catch you later. <laughs> totally. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it is hard. And I guess, you know, as a, as a podcaster, that's just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it, it has been, I, I can say exclusively for us, it has been a very good community to be a part of. It's very supportive. Um, you know, people are willing and, you know, especially like with the board gaming community to, you know, to help, you know, with ideas and things. And, you know, we've been part of some, you know, AB testing for like, you know, Kickstarter stuff and all. So the community itself is really good. Um, and and that's been across all mediums, at least, you know, from our perspective anyway. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're totally right. The the beauty about the community is it's so supportive. It's a very it's a very liberal community. It's very in- inclusive as well, mm-hmm. um, in terms of you know allowing people to come in and you know new people. Hey, you're a newbie. You you need to learn this, but let me help you out as well. So it's fantastic. I I, I love everything about this community. It's just great. Cool. All right. Does do your uh, game nights when you're uh, you know say not play testing a you know a new game that you're working on, but just you know getting together with a group of friends and you know playing some game. Does it does it feel like sometimes it it becomes research time, especially if you're playing something new? You know, maybe you know just something from the store. <clears throat> Definitely. Um, and <laughs> uh, this was something I was explaining to Cully the other day was that you know when you're playing a new game. You, you're thinking to yourself, oh, maybe, you know, you could have changed this or you could have changed that. I mean, the perfect example was uh, I went to a games night in my old department. Uh, I, I ran a, a board game night over there uh, every month, and that was great. I really loved it. So my friend took over that. And cool. uh, so one of my friends had Scythe, and somehow he managed to buy it for the equivalent of, like, I think $40 or something, which is crazy, crazy wow. price. <laughs> So I've been I've been dying to play it, and uh, we got it got it to the table, and I just spent the entire time just clocking through the mechanics and just thinking it rather than actually enjoying it, and I came I think a very bad third out of four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's I think I think it's just like anything. If you're a musician uh, and you go to a bar and you're listening to music, it's you know you're 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 thinking about the notes that other people are playing or. For instance, I used to be a DJ when I was younger, and I'd, I'd, I'd be there like, oh, man, he didn't do that scratch very well. 
<laughs> so yeah, it's, I think it's just like anything really. Sure. Does that take some of the fun out of it when you get together to play games or no? Are you able to separate that then? Um, yes and no. It's still fun, but it, it's also work. Um, just because obviously you're spending your whole time working on board games and the graphic design of stuff and you know the mechanics of stuff. So yeah, it's it's fun and it's also research. So <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. All right. I know we we don't have a ton of time, but I do want to get a plug in for our sponsor, Easy Roller Dice Company. Uh, I I saw on your blog that you were a a big Warhammer 40k fan back in the day. <laughs> I used to be as a child, not anymore. <laughs> I used oh, to have a I used to have a Chaos Army. Nice. So uh, Warhammer 40K requires tons and tons of D6s. So if you're into Warhammer or D&D or, you know, any role-playing games and stuff, you could head over to easyrollerdice.com. If you use code LEGENDS10, you'll get 10% off your order. Uh, they've got some really cool stuff over there. You get dice and dice mats and dice bags. It's kind of a theme. Uh, but they have other things as well over there. They've got beard oil for the discriminating geek with a full bushy beard. <laughs> Uh, I could have used that like 10 years ago. I had some, I was a, a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> so check out the guys over there at Easy Roller Dice Company. Uh, we appreciate you going out and supporting our sponsors and they appreciate your business. Uh, they have a 30 day money back guarantee that, you know, unless the post office breaks your dice or somehow damages your stuff, you'll never need it because their stuff is awesome. So tell them we sent you, go over and check them out and we appreciate it. Thanks everybody. All right, back to the show. <laughs> All no right, problem. so we've, we've been kind of dancing around this whole thing. Your current Kickstarter is for Cauldron Master. Can you tell us a little bit about the game? Yeah, so um, it is it is a filler game, uh, but it uses um, like a nice blend of social deduction and set collection all in one. There's a little bit of push your luck as well. So all of that mixed together, and um, I feel like it's quite a good game, really. Mm-hmm. Looks like a fun game. So you uh, you have five cards in your hand of, of different uh, different uh, witches or, or yeah. witch substitutes, herbalists, and, and different things. Yeah. Um, and so the social deduction comes in because everyone has the same hand of cards. So the, the card with the lowest uh, number on it will go first. And um, you get to choose from the tableau of ingredients to put in your cauldrons. Uh, each cauldron has a different requirement, either two, three, or four ingredients that can be posted, uh, posted, placed in it. And when you fulfill those requirements, you'll score those out. And uh, at the end, whoever has the highest score wins. So it's pretty simple. Uh, yeah, you've done your research. Uh, yeah, <laughs> well done. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, but yeah, you, you, I mean, the, the other rewarding thing about it is, uh, you know, picking ingredients up before other players um you also have uh, these bonus cards which is in the expansion which allows you to to mix it with other other ingredients which allow you to score bonus points and then on top of that you also have these recipe cards which basically instruct you on getting uh, a mixture of different ingredients in your cauldrons to score even more points so if you manage to get you know three of the same type and then you get a bonus card and you get this recipe card then you you know it can be really rewarding but get loads of nice points mm -hmm. uh, so yeah so i think i think you hit the nail on the head with the basic mechanics <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's all part of the service <laughs> <laughs> i'll have to come back here more often then yeah <laughs> So as of this live recording today, I believe there's five days left on the Kickstarter. 15 bucks gets you the basic game, which is, you know, for a filler game, that's pretty standard. So that's fantastic. Uh, yeah. For a couple of bucks more, you could get the expansion, which has some some other ingredients and stuff in it. Uh, so that's, uh, that's always cool. You know, for a couple of bucks more, you always go for the extra, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's right. You also get a uh, a witch meeple, which is pretty cool. And then I, you know, just as a thank you, I'm, I signed those copies as well. Cool, that's awesome. Um, what what games do you have hitting your table these days? What what's uh, you know popular in your house? Oh gosh, um, so I recently learned how to play Lotus. Um, so we're going to get that to the table tonight, actually. So we're looking forward to that. Cool. Um, another game that I recently got was Explorers of the North Sea, done by Shem Phillips, who, who did Raiders of the North Sea. And, uh, oh, gosh, I love that game. It's fantastic. 
Um, but what else do we play? We play a lot of Splendor as well. And um, I love Splendor. I love yes, it. Yes, yes, <laughs> I love Splendor. Yeah, Splendor's a great game, but um, it's one of those games where I think you either love it or hate it. It seems um, like. Yeah, my, my partner, I think she likes it, but she's not like, ooh, you know, I really like this game sort of thing. And also with my friends as well, they kind of like love it or hate it, so it's a difficult one. But I love it because it's, it's, a, it's a lovely little engine build, and it's so simple. Mm -hmm. the, the theme is, is more pastiche. It's just kind of like, here you go, you're doing a thing. Now <laughs> get to work. <laughs> Yeah, it kind of felt like Kinitsia made the game, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, I think they've got an expansion coming out. Cities of Splendor, it's called, or something like that. I, I um, think this summer it's supposed to come out, I believe. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to just seeing more about that. I, yeah, hope, it, I, I hope it's not just more engine building. I hope it's, it's, it's a unique gameplay experience. Uh, from what I've seen, and I've only seen a little bit, it looks like they have a uh, different style of noble cards, which gives you different abilities or different... It looks like there's some different things happening from right. what's going on in the base game, which is nice. Um, I, I wound up... I, I picked up a copy on eBay because a friend brought her copy to our board game meetup, and it had the original, the heavy chips, which everybody who has, you know, has played on that one, it's like, oh man, these chips, they're amazing. Well... I, I broke my own rule and I picked up the game at Target because it was super cheap compared to the hobby shop. And I opened it up and I'm like, wow, these don't feel right. I'm, I opened oh, up no. another one and I'm like, what the hell is this? I'm like, I'll <laughs> take this freaking game back to the store. So I went and I looked online and apparently Asmodee in later editions changed and went away from that Ferris core chip to just like a regular plastic chip. Oh, and no. I'm like, this What's sucks. I don't want this now. <laughs> That, that is, yeah, that's one of the beauties of Splendor is you feel it and it's like, oh, it's so heavy. This is so nice. Yeah, well, I, I was able to find a copy on a normal poker chip either. It's, yeah. Yeah, I, I got, I found it for like 20 bucks. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I think 20 bucks is a good price. Yeah, you could, uh, the original editions now, the cheapest I've seen since I picked it up is like 50 or 60 bucks. Whoa. Wow, I'm keeping mine then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could get the other edition, you know, if you don't go to your FL, FLGS, which you absolutely should. But if you go to someplace like Target, you get it for like 35 bucks. I mean, it's not, not a yeah. tremendous amount of money. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've, we've played hundreds of games probably <laughs> since I picked it up. <laughs> wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. The other, the other games that we're, that we're playing at the moment is, well, we're play testing a lot of our next game uh, called Dice Hospital. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's I think that's going to do well because um, a lot of people will remember Theme Hospital from the '90s, uh, which people used to play on their PC. Uh, I certainly did, anyway. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's a it's basically Theme Hospital, the board game. Uh, obviously not affiliated in any way. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just it's a worker placement game. It was designed by a designer from Wisconsin, actually, and. Um, we got we got to a stage where um, the design was good, but we just feel that it needed to refine it. So actually, uh, I got in contact with the designer of Waggle Dance. I don't know if you've seen that. It's like a nice dice yeah. dice manipulation game. Uh, so he's now helping us out to refine the game. And yeah, so yeah, unfortunately, we are played we are playing games. But we're also play testing a lot of Dice Hospital as well. <laughs> yeah, well, that's so, always the way. <laughs> tell me about it. Yeah. All right, so that, so that that'll be your next Kickstarter then, presumably. Yeah, so probably, possibly June if we if we get uh, our bums into gear, but most likely September, I'd say. Okay, um, and that's actually being illustrated by the uh, by the illustrator of Quadropolis, actually. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so it will have this, this same sort of look and aesthetic to it. We hope so. Nice. Uh, it's a pretty quick turnaround. You guys are are still finishing up here with Cauldron Master. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think you have to be because uh, I think if I was full time, I would I would only be able to do one game a year. Uh, but since I'm doing this full time, you know, I think I have the time and capacity to do that. So, sure, sure, no, that, yeah. that's awesome. Hey, you're welcome to come back. Obviously, when uh... <laughs> yeah, of course, it would be, be great to come back. Yeah, come in and talk about all that stuff. Do you have any other games in the in the works as well, or is just Dice Hospital kind of like the main focus right now? Right now, Dice Hospital is the main focus. Um, I do have a game that I'm 
I'm sat on uh, that a designer sent me again from the US. Um, we were potentially going to change that into a, a virus themed game. Hmm. Although I'm aware that, that there is a game called Viral coming out quite soon. So I'd like to see what that's, that's like before uh, potentially signing this one up. And then uh, Mike Nudd, the designer of Waggle Dance, is also designing an uh, Egyptian-themed game for us where it's a little bit like your... Ex it's, it's basically a little bit like uh, Dead Men Tell No Tales from Minion Games, which okay. is like one of my favorite co-ops, by the way. Um, <laughs> but, but this one's more about uh, treasure hunting and then uh, like things that, like skeletons attacking you, but also we're, we're trying to include a mechanic where there's some kind of puzzle-solving element to it. But we're just trying to crack that, which is a bit, which is a bit difficult at the moment. So, but yeah, that's that's what we're currently working on at the moment. Cool. That sounds, sounds like you got a full plate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think uh, to survive as a small publisher, the only thing you can do is you have to continually release games as well. So, the thing, the other thing I'm doing on the side actually is I'm also consulting for other people's Kickstarter games. So uh, in a few weeks' time, uh, I don't know if you heard of Phil Eklund, who did uh, High Frontier and BIOS Genesis. So he reached out to me and said, would you like to do the Kickstarter for my game because you do science-themed games? And I said, yeah. So we're doing a, a reprint of BIOS Genesis, um, and uh, I'm also helping out with um, other guys, uh, Puppy Slime Games. Uh, they've got this cool little family dungeon crawler coming out. So I try and keep busy, but... but I think if, if you work well with your time, I think publishers can help other publishers out as well. Yeah, sure. Well, it goes back to that, that community aspect as well, you know, the, as supportive as, as the community is. So that's, that's definitely cool to see that, the, you know, that, that's affected you as well and that you're, you know, a part of that. Yeah, it's, it's really fun just seeing how other people work. Um, and it also gives you, you know, it makes you think, oh, maybe I could do it like this nowadays or, or change my thought process like that or whatever. It's, it's, it's nice to work with other people because, you know, you can easily get cabin fever just sat at your desk, <laughs> just yeah. thinking, just going crazy and just like, ah. Sure, sure. <laughs> so, yeah. No, that's cool. All right. Well, if we still have a couple of minutes, I could rapid fire our final five questions at you because I know sure, we're go. getting close here. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's sort of a, a binary thing. It's an either or. Uh, you can say both if you want to, you know, you can take that route. So there are uh, five geeky slash nerdy questions, and I'll fucking I'll fire them away. So okay. first one is Star Trek or Star Wars? Definitely Star Trek. All right. It's a whole <laughs> science background. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yeah. All right, cool. Uh, tabletop or video games? Ooh, nowadays tabletop. Okay. All right. That's good. Uh, DC or Marvel? Neither, actually. I'm not a big comic fan. Ah, okay. <laughs> Some of these are not enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, sci-fi or fantasy? Ooh. Uh, I'd say sci-fi. Okay. Uh, um, all right. Since, since the DC thing didn't work out, I'm, I'm okay. going to... We'll add another question. We'll just pretend right. like that other one didn't happen. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Doctor Who or Firefly? Um, neither actually. <laughs> ah, damn it. This third being, question's killing me. You no, know, being British, I should be Doctor Who, but I just, I just never got into it. That's, that's why I grabbed that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, for the Britishness, let's say Doctor Who then. All right, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one is, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Ooh, I don't know. Um, I guess maybe to see what other people are thinking. Hmm, I'd quite okay. like that. A little telepathy, all right, I like that. Yeah, something like that, yeah. I don't know if that's weird, but <laughs> that's what I'd like, I think. It'd just be interesting, because sometimes, you know, you're honest with people, and you say, hey, blah de blah but then they don't really give you an honest answer back, and I'm the sort of person where I like honest answers, so. Amen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially coming from the background, I guess maybe that's just how we, uh, you know, we sort of move through the world that way, I guess. Oh, yeah, totally. I think, you know, yourself coming from a science uh, academia background, um, I, I certainly, you know, whenever I spoke to my bosses, they just tell me straight, this needs to be done, this isn't going well, or, you know, the science behind this is shaky. So I guess uh, honesty is, I think, a big part of how I 
conduct myself and maybe how I expect other people to. But I guess in the real world, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it usually doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Never That's mind. I always tell my daughter, say what you mean and mean what you say. Uh, <laughs> so. that's, that's very good. Yeah, yeah. I wish I had followed that. <laughs> <laughs> Got me into trouble a lot of times. You're right. <laughs> all right. Well, we have links to all your cool stuff in the show notes. Uh, but if you have uh, any, uh, you know, web address, anything you want to throw out here before we uh, before we wrap up? No, you've got. I checked them, and yeah, you've got them all there. Thanks very much. Absolutely. Again, all part of the service. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, it was a uh, thanks for coming on. I know we, uh, you know, like I said earlier, we kind of caught you at the end of this, and uh, you know, congratulations for already being uh, successfully funded, and uh, you know, the runaway success with Lab War. So uh, we're we're hoping that you know Dice Hospital will be just as successful, and and all the other stuff that you've got coming out. And, uh, you know, you're obviously welcome to come back anytime you want. Yeah, thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure being on your show. Right, well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> it, it's fun getting to hang out and, uh, and meet new people. And, uh, you know, we, we do all these things for all these Kickstarter games, and we wind up spending about this much time actually talking about Kickstarters and, you know, the rest of the time just kind of geeking out and, you know, kind of finding out who people are and, you know, yeah. things that they're into. And I, and I think... You know, for me, it's it's interesting. Uh, you know, for me, it's a lot of fun. I don't know, you know, people who want to come to back, you know, Cauldron Master, and they come to this. And be like, the hell, I thought we are talking about, like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, personally, I, I think you're right, because Kickstarter is, uh, of course, it's becoming, you know, big bucks, and you've got the likes of Cool Mini or not. But at the same time, you still got us small guys, and I think people still want to know what are the small guys doing and how did they, you know, because a lot of people are aspiring designers or publishers. They want to know how how can I get into the industry or what inspired them. And I, I think uh, for me personally, I like to know that stuff as well. So it's been nice exploring just things that are not just Cauldron Master, for instance. <laughs> sure, sure. And, and, you know, this is probably like your 100th podcast this month already. So, you know, just to kind of... Actually, know, it's my first. A, is it really? <laughs> it's my first. So I'm very honored to do this. I think <laughs> I have, I think, two two more scheduled in the next couple of days. But this is this is my first. So I've really enjoyed it. Ah, nice. Cool. Well, it gives me all warm fuzzies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to throw out all of our details here. You can find this cool interview and all of our other awesome stuff at legendsoftabletop.com. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can reach out to us at legendsoftabletop at gmail.com. Uh, we're on Twitter at Legends Tabletop. Uh, we're on Instagram, Tumblr. Uh, you can find us on iTunes. Uh, SoundCloud is where our RSS feed is at. Uh, we're all over the place. Uh, you know, just punch us into Google and you'll find a billion things. Maybe not a billion. You'll find a lot. I don't know. All the stuff on the top. It'll probably all be for us. Um, we always ask for reviews. That helps us on iTunes. Uh, helps move us up in the standings. We actually have one. Uh, I hope Dalton898, you're still listening. He says, awesome job, five stars. So thank you, sir. We appreciate that. Uh, also, a shout out to inner horse and peter fox and dragon hizuki for downloading i see you guys pop up there all the time so we appreciate that um and we're out thanks everybody for checking it out thanks azer for coming on and uh go, yep go check out uh, cauldron master on kickstarter follow the links in the show notes and uh, we'll catch you next time <laughs>